Um, hi everybody, um, I'm Gabrielle Almeida. I'm an editor of the magazine Sashura, and I wanted to say first of all thank you to Thomas and Patrick for the invitation to for the invitation to talk today with Harriet. It was really nice. It really basically came about of we come in to see the show, and Sashura is a magazine of art and criticism, and we basically. That's great, thank you. <laughs> um, we basically focus on trying to explore the potential, the aesthetic potential of artworks. We want to kind of focus um, away from perhaps what other kind of experiences the artwork can have, social, etc., to kind of narrow down into kind of the aesthetic experience that an artwork can provide that is unique to a work of art. And so I remember we come in to see Harriet's work and it, it, it sort of just impacted us and we really wanted to do this. So thank you so much for that. And Harriet. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Just uh, thank you all for coming and, and looking at the work. I hope you spend some, if you haven't done so before, I hope you spend some time doing mm -hmm. that. So Harriet Corman, I, uh, um, I'm 74. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I've been doing this a long time. I'm a n native New Yorker. I went to Queens College uh, where I luckily had, I think, a, quite a good uh, education. Um, even though it wasn't an art school, it was a liberal, liberal art school. Um, the department was growing at the time and, and uh, the, the chairman brought in all of his friends as adjuncts, but they were you know, I'll mention a few at some point, but so, uh, uh, so I wound up, I think, having a, I, I wanted to go to art school, but that wasn't in the cards, and so I wound up having a good education. But um, so, and uh, that was that, and I, um, but, but painted all the time, and through various uh, things, waitressing, working for other artists, then a little bit of teaching, and, but always working. And, um, and that brings you up to, uh, and, and, and always um, really, after I left school, everything was abstract, and so always interested in these simple forms, simple abstract approach, um, and um, here we are. So I won't say any more about that, okay. but, um, so. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have you wait, a question yeah. you want to start with, and then at some point so, every, yeah, everyone think, can talk as I well? I think but. Like the idea would be we will just talk a little bit with Harriet, and at some point we we'd really would just be open for questions, so if anybody has something to, to, to ask, it would be interesting. But I just wanted to follow up on what you were saying, and we were talking the other day about how you became a painter, how did you encounter painting, how was your... I remember you mentioning that you had this... Um, more academic, formal training, this kind of realistic training, and then you went to college and you find this experience of people telling you just go out and see what they're doing in the city, just kind of try something new. And I just wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that. Oh, okay. Um, Queens College at the time um, was had um, um, we had a very traditional approach, um, um, working from the figure, drawing from the figure, uh, color studies, basic design, very traditional approach, um, uh, which I think I learned a great deal from. It was, uh, yeah, it was great. I, I learned a great deal, but, but uh, as I progressed, I was um, getting a little tired of it, and I kind of did a little bit, forayed into abstraction a little bit. Uh, but that was also not so, uh, I wasn't getting that involved because it still seemed like related to uh, the figures or landscape in a certain way. So I didn't, um, it, it, it didn't feel as uh, a part as I, was sort of looking for. And then, um, well, I don't usually talk about um, um, 
my teacher, Richard Serra, but it seems like the moment. So uh, um, simply because I, I would want to do things on my own. So, um, but um, Richard was brought in as an adjunct. As he was, he was just driving a truck, moving uh, uh, people's furniture around. You know, so he was happy to have an adjunct class. And but he was very. He really shook everybody up. You know, and would tell us to go to the city and see this performance uh, and this show, Yvonne Rayner dancing, Robert Ryman, Agnes Martin, Jasper Johns, Frank Stella. We had not been um, exposed to this. And uh, so it, it was um, very much fun to do this and then also um, the the ideas, all the ideas, the new the process. It was the moment of process art, which uh, really um, interested me very much. Um, uh, to instead of thinking of a picture, what the picture should be like, it just seemed more interesting to get involved in in this moving the materials around or building something or something like that. So that was really key for me, really interesting and important. Mm -hmm. And that was the main idea. And, and so that was very stimulating and also going into the city and the museums and seeing what was happening at that moment. Aside from, uh, um, you know, he would say, what are these people telling you? You know, you're painting like Cezanne, and you know, you, do you know what's happening, you know, in the city? And, and so we all went. And now, not everybody liked him, um, but it made, it affected me. And um, it really just, I just went in that direction. It just um. made perfect sense. Just say one more thing, and so another thing that um, uh, also uh, we had Fairfield Porter was teaching a course at the time there, and that was also extremely interesting because he, he but he didn't teach painting, he taught because uh, he he wrote as well as painted. And so his course was, uh, he would just give us articles and books to read, things I'd never heard of before, never read before, uh, philosophers, that was so interesting, and different articles in the art magazines. And so this was also um, really fantastic. So we, I just sort of lucked out to be at Queens College at this moment. And um, so that was how I moved into my current work. So yeah, I, I, did, I did wanted to sort of just um, talk about this idea of process art. Mm -hmm. how you, because you always talk about the different kind of series of works or the different kind of elements of your work as not, as coming out of sort of an idea that kind of develops in a certain way. Um, of focusing on the, how the process of making a painting, what the elements of a painting are, are what possibilities they, ha they propose to you, and how they change and they can transform. And so I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about kind of your understanding of what like focusing on process rather than perhaps on like something else has like given you? Yeah, well that's a, you know, a great question because the, to me, now everybody, has a different way of going about it. Um, but to me, if you, uh, first of all, I like the materials. I, I really like the materials a lot. I get a lot out of it, you know. But to me, if you focus on uh, the, what you're doing, the process, instead of the picture, uh, I think you have, when you have a picture in mind, you have it in mind, in a way. But if you just focus on the materials or your activity, something quite um, uh, different can emerge. And I thought that was really interesting. And um, so when I started with that, it was you know covering and removing and things like that. But then um, 
I've found that even though I moved away from that and, and in a way bec when I returned to oils, I, the work you, you could almost say it was more conservative. But I, I still think that the idea of the process, what's happening when you're working is really interesting. And uh, again, it gets you a little bit away from one's idea of what, um, what a painting is. So, um, and so even, so that moves ahead through all these years. Maybe 10 years I was doing the acrylic scrape off paintings and then switched to oil and then, so 40 years. But I think the, the feeling the, uh, of process continues all the way through even though, again, when I switch to oils, it's a little more conservative, but let's say in this body of work, um, mm -hmm. the process is very interesting and important to me. Uh, I, I don't, just very briefly, uh, it, it was um, a little bit about, uh, well, the drawings are very spontaneous, they're just very quick and kind of a mess, and, uh, and then I found this form that I wanted to work with. But then the paintings, um, this is kind of a long story, but briefly, the, the, the paintings, um, uh, in order for, for, the paintings are totally different. And so in order for them to really work, there's a, a transition that occurs between, from the paintings to the drawings that, um, uh, is, I find, extremely interesting uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't know, like, if you could, some of the drawings have a lot of modulation, a lot of <laughs> mistakes and this and that. And at first I tried to emulate that in the painting. Uh, it really didn't, it, it just was, didn't work at all. It, and, and, and so I realized, you know, that, well, the painting is very different and I had to decide what I wanted to keep from the drawing or how to synthesize it or, so um, it was, uh, it's, I found it extremely interesting. It's almost like painting the figure in a way, like the, the, the drawing becomes like the model, you know, and then, um, you, I'm working on it and, and I have to decide what I want to put in, what I don't want, I have to simplify, I have to decide what's important, or, or, or maybe it's just a complete transition, but it, it was, um, I found it very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm still working on a couple of these, so. I did have two, like two questions out of that. One was, when I was thinking, we were talking earlier about the drawings and the paintings, especially in comparisons like these ones over here. Um, and you were mentioning how much more like mix the colors were. Yeah. Like in, uh -huh. the, in the drawings, how more like they overlap, they have like combinations that when you went to the painting, you felt that you needed to sort of clarify those. And mm -hmm. what it felt to me by seeing the difference between the two is that the relationship of color changes, how color works on the drawings as how color works on the paintings mm -hmm. are very different because of the shapes being more clear and more distinguished. Yeah. And so I, wonder, I don't know, I wonder how you think, especially since it's something that everybody that comes and see your paintings thinks about is like how you work the color. It doesn't have this, how do you call it? It doesn't have like an impressionistic aspect. It doesn't impact you and you're meant to see the combinations or something. Mm -hmm. It has a more subdued, detached feeling. Um, but I do wanna, I don't know, I wanna, I wanna yeah. ask you what you think okay. of how you well, work on color. Well, there are a couple of things in the drawings, just the nature of the drawing and the material, there's, they're more modulated, there's more, uh, um, mushy stuff in them and whatever. And so, um, you know, I have to find a way that it's gonna make sense in the painting. But, um, uh, let's see, I just, um, 
so, but um, the color is uh, also now the the color in the draw in the paintings is not always is quite the same as the color in the drawings, um, because. Um, in the drawings, you, the white of the paper affects the color quite a bit, whereas in the paintings, um, I don't keep them transparent in any way. I like to make sure I have a, a good amount of paint on there, and, and so the color will be um, different. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, in the, this painting here, the drawing is uh, right behind uh, Kim, over there. Now that blue around the edge, uh, because on the paper is lighter, but I decided to just use the exact blue, but here it will be much darker. So there's a change and a difference that I, I choose. Mm -hmm. I choose that. And um, uh, there's another aspect of the color, uh, which is that um, a number of years ago, um, uh, in about 96, uh, I had done a black and white series. I finished that, and, and then I uh, went back to my usual palette. And all of a sudden, everything seemed very uh, cloudy. You know, I you always would mix white in my paint. Everything seemed kind of cloudy. And, 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 and it didn't have the impact of the black and white, had a lot of impact. And, and you know, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can uh, paint without uh, white in, in my color, like watercolor. You know, you don't use white, but the paper is like the white because it's transparent. So I thought, <clears throat> I wonder if I can eliminate white and just paint with the color. So I tried that a little bit, uh, and I, I found it very interesting. And in, and in one regard, one thing was a few of those paintings were very dark, and I thought, why not? You know, um, it's all these Tibetan paintings, they're very dark. You know, why not? Why does it? So uh, very dark, that interested me. Um, and, uh, but then the, the I might go, you know, I, I don't decide I'm going to make a dark painting or whatever, but, but some of these. So <clears throat> that idea of eliminating white, it kept, it kept holding up at first. I thought, oh, this is a stupid idea, you know, what do you, you know, but, but it, it kept um, um, holding up and it seemed to uh, free up the drawing a little bit because I did that one little tweak I got and I worked on the beginning ones and then all of a sudden the drawing, I kept that color idea and then the drawing started to change from very geometric to then more organic and then it uh, back to geometric and, and all kinds of things were happening in, um, in the painting so I um, uh, so I've stuck with it, and so I, that's 25, what, 96, what is it, 25 years or something. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I think it, um, uh, it just worked for me, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Harry, yeah. I did want to, to come back maybe to the question of process in the sense that I guess the other day we were talking about how it allowed you to sort of create new and different paintings every time, like not get stuck on something that seemed to be repetitive, that something that was unique about your words was its capacity to each of them be different. And on the other hand, I was like thinking when I was leaving the, the studio, whether there is a risk at some point that experimentation becomes just experimentations for experimentation's sake. Mm -hmm. How do you think about experimenting for towards what? How do you think what the picture that experimentation is going to allow you to make? How does that come uh -huh. into... Okay, well, yeah. 
you experiment, everybody experiments. And, and then um, it seems like, I think when I'm, ex at this point, after painting a long time, you know, when you're younger, you experiment all the time and, and uh, uh, throw out many canvases and whatever. But recently, when I'm experimenting, it's more on paper. And um, it all of a sudden, like with this series, so the previous series was like these uh, quadrant uh, paintings with the cross. That was in here in, in, in um, uh, 2018. And then um, when I felt finished with that, so I didn't know where I was going to go, but I, I drew for a while. And then um, this form, the concentric rectangles, kind of came up. And I thought, I like this form. I, I like this because it's so um, it's so ordinary, and I thought I'd like to see, and it's so known, you know. And so I thought I'd really like to see. I had this uh, if I could do something with it. So, so there's a point where see after you know when you're so when you're doing this for a certain amount for 40, 50 years, you know. Uh, you have a, voc a bit of a vocabulary that you're working with. So um, for your question is when does the experimentation move into something else, if I'm, if I'm getting yeah. that question right. Um, so at a point, uh, you make a choice, you know, so at a point, um, I say this is it, this is what I want to work on this and um, and also I feel it's my responsibility to do that because uh, um, I don't I feel well I've come to this point after so many years I know I'm doing these simple geometric paintings mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to abandon it and and so at a certain point um, I have to finish it. I have to. I have to finish it. So, and um, uh, good or bad, whether it's good or bad, whether you know, I feel a responsibility a little bit to these ideas that I've been working with for so many years. So that's where. So when I finish these, I'm working on a few more. I have a few ideas I'm going to draw. Mm -hmm. and then see which one will, might be the most interesting and so yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I would think about one more question before I open to the public. Um, but one, one other thing that I wanted to talk with you about was um, usually when like a younger person comes to see a painting, something like abstract painting, there is this kind of impression, perhaps kind of superficially, that it's very different than any other painting made in the past. That is, um, and it's really, my question is about how you see the relationship of form that you created, the focus on form, as relating with things that you've seen before, that you go and see on a museum, that you go, how do you, do you learn from those things that people in the past have done? Or, or not, or do they affect your work in any way or not? Well, I'm very affected by, I see a lot of work, and very affected by the art history I took in school. I, I think uh, when I talk about formalism, which I said I'm a formalist, uh, I, I think it's the same whether it's for me or for Giotto. It's, it's what you're going to do on the surface, uh, on your flat surface. Uh, um, how you want to treat the space, how you want to treat the color, how you want to treat the shapes. It, for me, form is the surface. So for me, I look at, I really don't see 
I, in many ways, I don't see any difference. But so for abstraction, um, For me, I look at all that work, the Renaissance, all the work, all the realistic work, everything, and, uh, and for me it's the same, and all the abstract work. Um, the form, for me, is pretty consistent. So, for young people looking at abstraction, or the, it's, so for me it's not different, but you do need to know, I think, um, uh, it's a slightly different vocabulary, maybe, uh, if, for, for abstraction. So you do need to, I think, know some art history. Uh, and um, uh, with, with, I mean, you can't say black or white or pin it down. I mean, lots of stuff, especially today. So much is happening. You you want to see, you want to see and think about everything, uh, but um, to uh, for me, I always like to make a relationship to other art that I've seen, and uh, so I would never say, "Oh, this sprung from nothing." You know, I. I Although possibly it did, but uh, <laughs> but, but um, uh, I uh, um, I mean if it's completely new, it's probably based on an idea which needs to be explored. The viewer needs to really explore that idea as well mm -hmm. as the artist, and it could be something really fantastic. Um, but uh, for me, and and let's say with the. Uh, my abstract work, I would, I would uh, say, uh, I, I hope it's new and fresh, and yet I'm very interested in, oh, in, in the whole history of painting. So, um, uh, I guess I do want to open it up a little bit so that we can have questions from. Yes. Hi. Um, um, you had at some times um, not wanted to mix colors and you use color out of the tube but so many different brands and you know it, are these paintings done that way too? Oh well you know when I eliminated the white and, and I just and I kept my um, uh, compositions very very simple. I wanted to see what uh, to get the most out of the color I could. Um, it really wasn't necessary to mix a lot of color because I really wasn't. I mean, I can, in a way, I use color in the worst way possible. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I, I abuse color. It, it'll be. I just use it to draw with to separate areas. I mean, I can mix, uh, you know, when I was an undergraduate, the, <laughs> the school hired me to, to teach this color class. <laughs> so, I mean, I can mix color, but, but, um, but uh, I can make much more beautiful colors. But, but, but um, uh, it didn't need, it just need, I just needed it very simple. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, it wasn't necessary, so I just, used it as it was. But let's say, but in different, as, as the work keeps changing and evolving, like for instance, this painting here, which was the last of this group that I finished, this needed, I needed to, there were a few paintings I really, really wasn't, I couldn't, it really wasn't working. I had to actually mix the color. So I'm not opposed to it, but it, it, it just, well, I, 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 I think, there are a bunch of these. Uh, that one back there uh, has a lot of mixtures, and that, and, and uh, but um, at first it just really wasn't uh, necessary. So I just. Can I ask another? Yeah. yeah. And um, can you talk a little bit about um, like the curved edges on some of the paintings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well. Um, 
<coughs> um, this was a lot of fun, you know. <coughs> I have this idea and I'm working. Oh, this one wasn't from a drawing. <coughs> Sometimes I don't work from a drawing. I had this idea and, and uh, uh, this one is maybe the only, oh no, uh, the small ones also were not from drawings. But um, <coughs> so <coughs> I had this idea with the rectangles and I'm painting and I'm go <coughs> going, well, it doesn't really have to be straight. You know, so <laughs> it's a painting. It's not, you know, doesn't have, so. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but but I mean, it gives it a different quality that you don't measure it and make a, uh -huh. a straight line on everything. It has a kind of playfulness to it. Well, this is funny because at first I tried to. I had the drawings. And I tried to measure it all out. I tried to, you know, I took the measurements and it didn't work at all. I, it's just, I mean, it didn't, first of all, the, the proportions aren't quite the same as the drawings of the paintings. It's not quite the same. So I guess if I wanted it to work, I had to be like, I had to do all this mathematics or whatever. But I sort of simply measured it out. Did not work at all. And uh, so I, I just realized I had to um, just do it freehand, uh, freehand. And um, it worked much better. It came out much better. In fact, the looser it starts, mm -hmm. the, the, the painting starts, the more accurate it actually becomes. So um, it just, uh, I just, Somehow it captures, because I'm not really interested in reproducing the drawing, but I pick out the drawings I really like, and I'm not really interested. I, there's something in the drawing that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what it is. You know, it would be different for every drawing. Mm -hmm. It's something in, in that thing. And, and, and so I'm, I try to capture that. Mm -hmm. I'm not really, what, what interest, the dynamic in the drawing, what interested me in the drawing, that's what I uh, would like to capture mm -hmm. in the paintings. Mm -hmm. so. um, any? Anyone? Yeah. Thomas? I have a question. So, um, Gabriel already said, uh, at what point does experimentation actually uh, Stop having any meaning and becomes ex experimentation for experimentation's sake, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said also another remark you made is the law of formalism. Now, being in the gallery, I actually experience that people do not see these goals experience. I'm sorry, Thomas, the last little bit, maybe oh, take off your mask. Uh, I got everything. <laughs> Yes. But, but the, would you say something when people come in the gallery? But, uh. When people come in the gallery, they don't experience the world formally. You know, they carry, the, the paintings carry a charge, they carry a potential meaning, which doesn't have to do with the formal aspect, for example, or maybe they're generated. Uh, they don't feel gratuitous, or oh, I'm just doing something experimental. So I wanted to ask you, um, would you know, uh, do you pursue a meaning Oh, is there something you would say, oh, this is what meaning would, uh, would uh, be for me, or could, could you define something there? So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people coming in would not uh, see the form that interests me, the, the form, I, I see that, and they could respond to other things, which is great, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I love to hear about that. Um, but um, at, uh, if I'm getting the question right, uh, so at what moment, uh, ah, I see, right, so the experimentation stops at a certain point, which I discussed, so the meaning, <clears throat> um, well, I guess the, me the meaning would be, uh, in a way, why everybody paints. <clears throat> uh, Everyone would ask themselves uh, why, or why everybody paints. Well, there'd be many, many reasons, and um, so 
I think um, a, 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 that when people look at work, um, they should um, uh, have a conversation with the work, have, have a conversation with the painting. In other words, uh, you know, stay there, get, have a question, just look a while, go back and forth. And um, it, it, it could be a great experience or not a great experience. And, but in a sense, it's like um, uh, getting to know someone, you know? Is it a great experience or not a great experience? Or, and, and so, <laughs> so um, I would think, in a sense, a little bit for all art, and maybe, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the uh, biennial yet, but uh, I read a little bit about it, but uh, for all art, in a way, you are, um, you're getting to know someone, um, what they think about, how they spend their time, um, what their politics are, uh, all kinds of things like that. So I think, in a way, you, the, if you really look at a lot of work and spend some time with it, you, you uh, get a sense of who that person is. And, you know, uh, that's why we read poetry. That's why we read books. That's why um, uh, we look at paintings as, as uh, it could be a uh, really fantastic experience. And um, so, uh, um, I guess yeah. one question is, the way that you put it, it feels that when you experience a painting, and this is very similar to how I feel about when I see a painting, it's not really a closure, it's mm -hmm. more like an open question. Is mm -hmm. If the painting is really new and different, is gonna be something that is gonna challenge you. And that, something that you said earlier, when you paint, on, when you do the drawings, it's not that you wanna copy the drawing to the painting, but you see something on the drawing that may, like, I don't know, wants to be a painting, that is yeah. like asking to be a painting. And I wonder if you feel the same when you see other people's paintings or your own paintings. It's like sometimes they just tell you, like another painting, like another thing that you may uh. want to, it just seems to open possibilities for keep making work? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think a good experience with a painting when you're looking at, a, I'm not sure if this is really so or if this happens all the time, but a good experience is when, when you see a show or something when, is when you can almost in your mind imagine what the next thing the artist is gonna do. You know, when you say, oh, you know, when it gives you that feeling of, of uh, Oh, I can see them going this way, or that way. Uh, you know, a sense of um, other ideas happening. Um, rather, uh, I think that's a a good place, a good place uh, to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 in terms of open or closed, I think um, people now. Uh, well, you know. I, I think um, viewers, I think, um, should um, see the painting as, as open, you know, and, and, and uh, to have a real dialogue with the painting. And, and, and if, it's, if it's too closed, uh, um, you know, if, you, if, if it's not giving you some openings, things to think about or whatever. Um, well, I don't know, maybe that's not so, because there are a lot of uh, paintings like that that I like a lot, but anyway, that's, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, no. Any other, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that, that I find so interesting about what you're talking about is, in terms of the systematization, right, it's like, it's both leading and being led. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of following after the, the breadcrumbs that are dropped along the trail, and then also kind of experimenting to see where you are in a given moment. And I wonder, in that, that 
if you look for a balance in that, if you look to kind of push it one way or the other, because I think oftentimes that idea of finding that balance leads to a place that feels more like stasis. Like, like what? Stasis? Like stasis. Okay. And these feel very opposite that. It feels like they're, they're kind of moving and there is an activity in them that I, I respond to very, very deeply. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> you know, if I get another idea, you know, just from this group, you know, it, it just, um, it's great. And uh, um, so um, I hope I fully got your question. It's a, a little hard with the math, but, but I, I think, you know, if, if I, when I'm drawing or whatever, if I, I if something looks good to me or uh, interesting, exciting, uh, you know, that's, that's great. And so, we had, it was, was that sort of your question? Uh, but Yeah, I think, I think the, the thing that I was talking about is this idea of stasis. Oh, where, stasis. Where, where, where it often feels like you're trying to kind of find a balance where things settle somehow. Oh, oh, that's an interesting And, and this seems to do the opposite, where it, it kind of keeps things in a, in a place where there's a, the, the experiment somehow keeps reverberating. Well, that's great, you know, but stasis is a little bit, you know, yeah, it could be a problem, you know, so. <laughs> um, uh, that's great. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's, that's an interesting point where things are active and when they're not. I, I, I think you don't, I think it's interesting, but then there are some way, times and artists and places where like, for instance, Don Judd. I like Don Judd's work a lot, actually. And he's really working with, you know, uh, he wants it to be like that, really still, uh, I think. I, you know, I, and, and I think that has a type of uh, reverberation. And even though, you know, I think that it has, um, I, you know, that stillness, that artificialness that, that, that is in his work that, that, that MoMA uh, last year, I mean, some of those, they're, they're like, they're like monsters, they're like monoliths, they're, you know, and, <clears throat> but that uh, strong personality, come, that, um, uh, that stasis, is, is somehow moves beyond, it, it, it's, I find it quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that you can, you know, uh, say one is definitive in a way, mm -hmm. but uh, so. Yeah. Um, something that you said about getting to know the artworks really resonated with me, because I'm a violinist, so sometimes it feels like when you play a piece over and over again, not just intellectually, but also kind of physically. Like it just changes the way that you hear music or have to listen. And so I was wondering if there's a similar experience when you paint. Like when you were painting all of these paintings, did you find that like over time you kind of started feeling different about how you saw things? Or, or if you have an experience like that, I don't know if it's exactly equivalent with music, but I just wanted to Yeah, that's what uh, like, um, uh, in these, since they're geometric and simple, and uh, especially in the in the series before, <clears throat> now I have to paint them a couple of times because otherwise the color isn't strong enough. And um, so um, people would. But the funny thing is, so let's say I have to. I know the painting. I'm going to paint it about three times. The thing is, is it's not boring at all. It's, it's, it, because every time you uh, do it, the color changes a bit, the line changes a bit, the texture of the paint changes a bit. I, well, I, maybe I'm like just, you know, a meditator, you know, and I'm counting beans, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but to me, or I'm weaving a basket, but, but to me it's very, uh, 
um, it constantly changing. Even mm -hmm. though I'm like just repainting this painting, it's constantly um, uh, changing. So that idea of playing the piece over and over is is, is a, a nice analogy. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that. But, um. do, you, do you ever regret that maybe you went too far? You know, like uh, maybe the second coat you should have just Oh. <laughs> uh, not really, because the thing is, though, because the color doesn't, one of my ideas was I really wanted a very strong color when I started this idea. So it really, um, it, in order for it to have that color, I really do have to it paint it a few times. It doesn't really, mm -hmm. um, because they're fairly thin, it doesn't really... Um, uh, um, get the right color, so I, I do. But in terms of going too far, I mean that that I, I know I have to do that. But going too far is an interesting thing. Like it would happen in, let's say, in, in this in this painting and that drawing, <clears throat> where I was trying to decide exactly what I was going to put in the painting. Oh, should I? Oh, this one I'm working on now. Oh, should I see if I can get that other line that's floating around there in the painting? And you know, so it's it was a tricky question. It's one of those things. So should I do it or shouldn't I? <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah. Oh, in in that one back there, I went too far a couple of times. I had to repaint it. <laughs> I, I I I did. I I tried to put more of the lines and uh, it didn't work and I had to. Uh, but most of the times in painting you, you can go back. Not all the time, but uh, a lot of the time you can go back. You know, that's one of the great things about painting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is you sometimes can, <laughs> can uh, uh, reverse something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, yes. yes. I, I keep looking at the browns, the different ways in which the color brown appears, and I, I want to know at which point in the process that happened. It happens in the drawings, it seems, and I'm thinking that it's not often that I associate the sense of humor or a mischievousness with the color brown, but that's what I that's what I experience here, that the brown the different browns play a role and something about that makes me smile because it interrupts something. Well that's that's good. Um, yeah. <coughs> the browns are very interesting because <coughs> there's so many subtle differences. And uh, by the way if you're interested in earth colors and browns, Vasari uh, paint has <laughs> probably about 30 earth tone browns, incredible browns, incredible. Uh, and, and from all over, from, from Italy, from France, just incredible. Uh, a little more expensive, but some of them. <laughs> but some of them, I actually had had to mix. Um, they they really weren't. I actually had to mix a couple, which is surprising because they have. I mean, I have like, uh, you know, uh, fifteen of them in front of me, and I would think I would prefer to find the right one and not mm -hmm. fuss with it. But um, um, but the browns are quite. Uh, Fun and lovely, and, and um, so. And I hear they just moved back <clears throat> to Chelsea. They they left uh, Vasari on I think it's Twenty Seventh Street uh, West, and um, they left town at the pandemic. Uh, so over two years now, and I just got a thing. They just came back. Um, so. Um, and um, I hope, uh, if there are any more questions, but I hope uh -huh. everybody looks uh, and, um, and uh, gets into the work. And, but if there's any last uh, 
question. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to answer, but otherwise, uh, right? And that's about yeah. right. right or, okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, <laughs>